Today's conversation is going to be about weathering the storm. So come on, let's head up to the campsite and let's have some fun. Come on. Okay, so I thought I found remote. As you just heard, that was a um, hospital emergency uh, lifeline helicopter that just went over. So but anyway, we're out here in our bug out vehicle. I'll show that to you in just a minute. And uh, we're gonna climb the other side of the hill and we're gonna show you the one of the three ponds that we have for fishing. And um, well, we're just gonna have a nice time today out. So come on, let's start our good time. And let's talk about weathering the storm and about how you can stay in a good mood and keep your family happy and healthy and wise during a really traumatic time. You know, you don't have to be serious all the time. So come on, let's have some fun. Okay, this is my bug out vehicle. Now, let's head up this hill and let's get to our site. Wow, this is just absolutely stunning. You can see one of the ponds here behind me. I'm on one of the paths actually. We came up that hill. You can see it leads right down here to some excellent fishing. You want to be sure when you're out someplace like this, you want to be sure and stay hydrated. I think that's really important. Especially since I'm wearing black. Okay, so we're out here today. What we want to do is we want to talk about weathering the storm. Now, when there is an SHTF situation, meaning shit hits the fan, um, we'll just call it crap hits the fan for those of us who know that I'm ordained so there's some words I probably shouldn't be saying on camera but um, but you really for your family's sake uh, you adults and you older teenagers you really need to learn six or seven details I've got seven of them outlined here details on how to psychologically fit yourself in order to weather the storm so how you really want to view yourself in this situation it's like what I tell a lot of people that I will um, that I will train. A lot of people who have military training understand this. Is you have to in the very beginning you have to control your thought process. And one of those thought processes is um, well, imagine like one of the trees around here, like one of these trees back here. Oh, right here's a good example. See the willow tree right here behind me. All right. Well, that tree's very bendable, and the reason why it has survived out here at this pond for so long and you don't see very many trees around it just some trees that are up next to it see the little family of trees around that one it's because the willow will give and bend in the storm but it doesn't break and you need to set some deep roots you need to be pliable enough and adjustable enough that you can make your situation work for you you need to adjust to your situation just like that willow tree that's the perfect example right there behind me on the pond and you know uh, the other trees follow suit the willow tree is the first tree to reach water its roots will travel a longer distance than any other tree to get to water so you have to be like the willow tree um, an oak tree or a maple tree for example they're the first to break in the storm you're always going around your yard when you're out mowing and you're picking up uh, limbs from the maple trees and the oak trees and stuff because they're so hard and hardcore they won't bend so you have to learn to bend your thoughts in your mind in order to adjust and this is very important and that's that right there was the best example uh, parable almost like that I could think of to, to help you to understand how to adjust to your environment very important okay and uh, and I'm sorry about the sunglasses today we it is very sunny here I've got the view of a beautiful barn from here a beautiful gray barn I'm gonna show that to you in just a second the corn is up and it's starting to turn brown. We're, you hear that? You can hear all the crickets, the bees, the bees here in the mustard grass. I think this is called mustard grass here, I think. <laughs> I'm gonna find that out, it's some sort of weed. But um, I kept, I let it grow up this year. But we're at the end of the season and isn't it just beautiful? Uh, my birthday's in a couple of days, I love fall. And it is just absolutely stunning here today especially with that view behind us. 
this is just a very beautiful quiet place you may think mentally you really need that you need to get away and we're going to talk about that here in one of our uh six to seven steps of how to weather the storm we're going to talk about that in just a minute now first off um i'd like to start out by saying a prayer um i am an ordained minister and my husband almost went into the priesthood, but he switched from Catholic into Baptist so that he could get married. And um, we have eight kids between us. And um, most, almost all of them have grown and gone and through college. Um, yes, I am uh, getting older. <laughs> and uh, I've enjoyed every minute of my life and with my children. So I just want to say a quick prayer with you all. And um, so if you just bow your heads, if you're a praying person, bow your head now. Uh, this is one of the things that you need to weather the storm. You need to get spiritual. So, um, so for me, I need this. And I'm hoping that you'll bow heads with me in a quick prayer as well. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for this wonderful, peaceful day that you've allowed us out here. The beautiful view that we have, the sunshine and the clouds in the sky are just tremendous today. They're just like a wispy will of the clouds today. And of the bees and, and, and how things progress in nature and how you made that, Lord. Lord, you made this. And we're just totally stunned by it every day. And please, Lord, help us not to get so busy that we forget about the things that you've given us that will give us peace in our daily lives. Right there above you, right there are two butterflies playing. I hope they come up here behind me so you can see them. Uh, up here is a hawk. Wow. You know, I mean, this is just absolutely breathtaking. And I mean, this is no Montana, okay? We're in central Indiana. This is no Montana. But you can still find the joy in it. And Lord, you know, just help my friends out there. Uh, help them keep a calm today. Help them through their troubles and just help them understand the joy that you have to give them even during their tough, tough times that you will be there for us and and I, I pray this in Jesus name and to help give the world some peace so that we can relax our minds and we can go about our day as you would have us stay on your path Lord in Jesus name I pray this amen all right so let's talk about weathering the storm. Um, you know, we talked about the willow tree and how you have to bend with um, with your environment and your situation. Different people will be in different situations. We have to bend, and as a family leaders, we have to be prepared to do this. You have to be prepared. So you need to start practicing that every day. You need to bend towards the day and your troubles and what's bothering you. And, and, and like I said, you can do this through prayer. Exciting, just the perfect breeze. I'm so excited today. I hope you are too. I pray that you are. And you know, leave a comment below and let me know what you did this week that just really lifted you up. I'd love to hear from you. You know, what you do to weather the storm. I'd, I'd love to hear from you, I really would. You know, after a disaster or a crisis situation, the first thing that you need to do is you need to gather your family up in prayer. If you're a spiritual person, by all means, whatever your religion, gather your family up in prayer if, you, if that's how you feel about it. The first thing you all want to do is you need to sit down as a family and even as an individual in quiet time and you need to acknowledge your feelings. Okay, men and women, it doesn't matter whether you show these feelings or not. It'd be nice to show your family that you, you want to be strong for your family during your crisis. You don't want to show weakness, right? All right. Well, in this situation, that's hard. That's hard to do because you want to be strong for your family. But actually showing that you have feelings might help your older son or daughter come out or your wife come out and say, yeah, you know what? I'm feeling bad today. You know, you've got to be able to have someone, at least one person in your group that you can turn to that you know will help you through it, even in a private way. But if you can do this as a family, it's even better. You want to help each other through it. And if you can get together even as a group with like-minded people, start that process now. you got to stop beating yourself up when a crisis happens. 
You know, you don't want to say things like, um, because beating yourself up, it's not helping you any. You know, is it helping the situation? Absolutely not. Absolutely not helping the situation. Being happy inside of the situation and finding some solace in it, that's what's going to help you get through this. Okay? Now let's talk about losing family members. Let's say a tornado went through and wiped out my house. I'm gonna, I could possibly lose my husband or family members. Ladies, you're going to have to be strong. Men, children, you're going to have to be strong. There's a time for mourn, mourning. It says so in the Bible. There's a time for mourning. There's a time for living. There's a time for fun. There's a time for work. There's a time for all of these things. There's a time to let your feelings out. This might be a good first step. Let those feelings out. Don't beat yourself up over what happened. Don't ask the hows and why did this happen. Because that's just not going to help you any. You need to get past it. Um, because we know losing, you know, losing your home and losing your, some, a member of your family or your entire family. <laughs> and I've done this with, with cancer in my family. It's not easy. It will be one of the toughest things that you go through. But with family and help and friends and, and starting to do these steps in advance and learn, learning how to adjust your psyche ahead of time, it's very, very important. Number two on the list, erase all blame, okay? Quit blaming the mortgage company that you lost your house. People blame you got in that car accident. Don't blame the old man that was sitting at the stop sign too long. You're the one that read the red light. You're the one that ran the red light, okay? People play the blame game because it makes themselves feel better. Stop it. Absolutely stop. Right there, stop. Quit blaming yourself. Quit blaming others. It's time to move on to step three. Okay, I don't even want to hear about step two. Quit blaming everybody else for your troubles and step forward and say, I should make a difference in my own life because nobody else is here that's going to do it. I got to make the changes for my family because there's nobody else here that's going to do it. Okay, step up to the plate. Quit talking and step up to the plate. So erase all blame. You know, why did God do this to me? You know, why, why did he throw me in the pits of hell like this? What did I do to deserve this? Why is God punishing me? Why is God punishing us? What did I do to deserve this? Look around you. Look around you. I am a good person and I do deserve this. And I'm happy that I'm happy in it. So quit playing the blame game. Nobody wants to be around a depressed person and you're going to get kicked out of any group that you're in because of blame game. We're humans. We, we have to maintain some form of humanity, okay, in a crisis situation. It's the only way to get through. It's what God would have us do, okay? So don't want to hear your blame. So, so you don't want to stay, um, what I'm saying is you don't want to stay paralyzed in a tragedy's grip. You want to move on, okay? So that's going to take us to our next point. So the need of social support, very, very, very important. The need of social support. Have you ever wondered? Okay, so everybody knows knows me by now. Is watching my videos knows that my that I came from an Amish background. My mother's background family is Amish. All right. So have you ever noticed how the Amish live longer? I bet you didn't even know that. The Amish have a longer lifespan than us. You're thinking, oh, they're eating all that fat and lard and bacon and everything, and their fat foods and all that. No. They work hard. They're healthy. But that's not even the point. The point is they have a strong support group. And when you're in a crisis situation, you need to already be a member of a strong support group. If you're a prepper, support, I mean, join some uh, prepper groups. Okay? Join the type of group that you fit in well enough with whether they be more of a religious leaning group towards your way or whether they're less religious and they um, support you in your thoughts and feelings about the end of the world coming to an end. Okay, whatever rocks your boat, try to get a support group that fits your personality. That way you'll get along better and they'll, they'll, they'll more readily accept you and accept the type of moods that you will get in and fall in and out of you'll have people that can work with you because they understand you better. Um, I have my support group and, um, and uh, um, it's a small group, but I'd like to make it a little bigger. 
but we love to can and garden and uh, we live miles and miles and states and states away from each other but we're still there to to accept each other to work together and isn't that important when I mean when crap hits the fan and you really need somebody you have your friends and you have your family hopefully they'll still be there for you okay so join a group get some support and join like-minded people I'm sorry the heat's pushing almost 90 now it's between 87 and 90 I can feel it number four on my list is ask yourself what would you do if you had one year left to live what would you do who would you communicate how you felt to? Would you tell your family that you love them? Is there a bucket list, things that you would do? Well, in a crisis, you would live the same way. You, you plan to live that same way. So think about how you would live when you're in advance in a crisis now and start adapting to that now. You know, whatever adjustments you can make, whether you live in the city, an urban area, a farm, you can make those adjustments. You know, if you had six months left to live, what would you do? How would you live? Take some notes and write that down and work that out with your spouse, your family members, and figure that out. And last of all, you need to ask yourself on point number three, what kind of person do you want to be? I want to be a good person that helps others the best that I can. Sometimes I'm ailing, I get migraines, I'm not feeling good, but I still try to get out there and do what I can. And that's all anybody ever expects from you. Sometimes people push themselves too hard. And uh, do what you can do be who you are and be free and I hope that you're in Christ if you'd like to be in Christ and you're not leave me a message below and we can pray together number five on my list number five on my list is very important it's finding meaning to live on in a crisis situation on how to keep how to continue to live now is a good time to set your priorities Get your priorities straight. Do it today. Start prepping, start preparing today. Oh, we got a little friend in the bushes there. You know, how you spend your time now is gonna affect how you live tomorrow. Remember that. And the last point on uh, point number five is how to use your strengths, okay? We all have strengths and we all have value. You need to write your strengths and value down for each member of the family and you need to decide whose roles will be what. Okay, now's a good time to do that. Point number six. To believe that you and your family, okay, that you will bounce back. You will bounce back. If you've lived through something pretty horrific and you've stayed bendable like the willow, then you're more likely to bounce back than anybody else. And you're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. Now take a deep breath. Ponder that pawn behind me for a moment. Thank you, Jesus. It's a beautiful day. And know that you're going to make it. Were you chosen by God to make it? That's between God and you. Was I chosen by God to make it? I make it every day and I thank the Lord. But I don't blame him. Ooh, bee. But I don't blame him. We got the bees heading our way now. I might have to move. Um, uh, different ways to bounce back daily. Exercise daily. Exercise your mind. Learn something new. Learn another language. Learn how to build something. Try to continue your children's education. And, and educate yourself while you're at it. I think that's very important because you know an education is still you may not think it's a priority but it is well, except you just adjust what they're learning they need to learn how to milk a cow you better teach them how to learn to milk a cow because you're not you may not always be around there's still farming accidents there's still car accidents there's still the bombs could go off you know you could live your day thinking about that just slowly prepare every day without worrying about it and you'll be prepared you don't have to rush out and can everything under the sun, like I do. There, okay. No, you don't have to do that. You, don't, you can stock up slowly and gradually. Don't spend all your paychecks on it. Don't
don't have your family suffer and go without so that you can have later. Uh, you want to do that a little bit. But you got to have fun now. You're alive now. Enjoy life now. God gave you this life to enjoy it. Thank you, Jesus. Enjoy it. Okay? Just do it. It's yours. Go for it. I hope if you get anything out of this video that you'll enjoy life a little more than you are right now. This is to those who aren't. Okay. Um, so you want to challenge yourself every day. Positive thinking is important. If you start losing that positive thinking, turn to the group leader. Turn to someone that you trust. Like we discussed in part one. What is that? We got a little animal there. You know, just learn to cope better on your day-to-day -day situation and you'll cope better now. I got a little animal here. I hear you, little animal. Okay, so on number seven, apparently the animal's like hearing me talk. Hello. Okay, a little ground squirrel here. So on number one, and this is very important, and then we're going to go. Um, connect with your spiritual side. That's my number one point. I made it number seven on the list, but it's still number one point. You must connect with your spiritual side to get through any type of crisis. It's very important. Take time, like I said before, to appreciate all of this. Look up at night at a star-studded sky and know that you're alive and that God loves you. It's very important to tell yourself this, for your family to know this. It's very important. Turn to your family pet. Know that your family pet still needs attention and love. He's there protecting you. And um, they're, just, they're very much part of the family. And animals can detect when you're depressed and they can also get depressed. So don't let that happen. You're going to need your dog. You're going to need your cat. You're going to need your family pets. Your, your kids will need them. Your farm animals. If you have some favorite music, then um, by all means, listen to your favorite music. If you're in a bug out situation, you might not want to listen to it too loud. Just like you don't want to put up a signal fire. But you know what? It's okay. We watch. Have you ever watched some of the old fashioned um, uh, Irish or Scottish movies uh, like The Patriot or whatever? They've always got music and dancing. In the middle of Civil War, you know, we had the music and the dancing. To celebrate is a very important part of being alive. Celebrate your birthday. Celebrate your anniversary. Don't forget your spouse in all of this. Let them know that you love them. Bugging out situation can be very hard. But if you're just making a go of it on a little homestead farm or whatever, very important that we all work together and be positive and support one another. And I'm here to support you. So let's end this in a prayer, shall we? Let's bow our heads and let's thank God for giving us this opportunity to share with one another and to learn from one another and to be in the spirit of this wonderful earth, okay? Dear Heavenly Father, we just wanna thank you for us gathering here today and for allowing us to come together under these circumstances and helping us to learn from one another. We want to thank you for the peace that you've brought us and everything that you've done for us. Bless us, nourish us, and keep us for Christ's sake. Amen. So come back and join us on our next video because I'm going to teach you back at the, we're going to head back to the house for a few minutes and I'm going to teach you how to make my chicken taco pie. And it is absolutely delicious. You can make this with any of your stores from your bug out stores, your, your storage stores. And you can use uh, uh, freeze dried food or dehydrated foods for this. I use fresh because it's what I had on hand in the kitchen. But it's absolutely delicious and I can't wait for you to join me. So. This is chef and builder Janie Pendleton out here my favorite secret little spot on our land out here and I hope you've enjoyed the weathering the storm uh, video that I've just brought you and I hope that this inspires you to go out and just do the things that you need to do and to bend like the willow
beautiful, isn't it? God bless. my vehicle. There's the barn in the distance that I was looking at that I was telling you about. Isn't that gorgeous? And there's our other pond here. And you can't see it, but we actually have another pond here and another one up front. That's four ponds we actually have.